So a lot of people go to AliExpress to buy really cheap products online from China or to start their own online e-commerce businesses. But with that being said, there's also a growing trend with a lot of people on Reddit saying that they're getting scammed from AliExpress, which begs the question, is AliExpress safe and how to avoid being scammed? More with that after the intro. Hey guys, how's it going? Mike Vasile here. Welcome to this video. Before we actually begin, I remind you that some spots have opened up for this week's free workshop, where it's the fastest and easiest way to make money online. Sign up for it in the link below. We literally have a 62 year old woman go from zero to 160 grand profit in 90 days, so sign up for it now. So, for those who don't understand what like AliExpress is, AliExpress is essentially like a website from China where you could essentially buy products for a low and kind of like flip them on eBay and Shopify and whatnot. And actually, with this weird, interesting method, I went from zero to $1.5 million in sales in 12 months. And not only that, but like a lot of people that I've interviewed on my podcast that live here in Bali also used AliExpress if they were in e-commerce when they were just beginning. But with that being said, I'm seeing a growing trend of scams of people that are on AliExpress to take money away from people that are either buying it from AliExpress or just using it as a supplier to go ahead and go do business, right? So with that being said, here are some common PayPal scams. Uh, the first one is a PayPal scam. You want to refund and open a dispute. The seller promises a refund using PayPal, but first you need to close the dispute. You agree to close the dispute. You actually get a refund on PayPal, so it seems. The seller waits until a buyer's protection expires. The seller does a PayPal chargeback. So that's another way. Another one is a fake tracking number. This happened multiple times when I first started uh, because of the fact when I was like selling a lot of high volume, for example, grill mats from China. One of the downsides is some of these uh, suppliers would end up like running out of stock. So not only that, but I would also still get sales online. So I would really come on here and just literally out of fear of missing out on sales and missing out on money that I would make online. I would just buy from some of these random suppliers, right? But some of them I would realize would give me fake tracking information and I would be out like a couple of dollars. But when you're getting like 100 or 200 sales a day, that actually adds up, especially if you go from the wrong supplier. Another one that's like miscommon is like an extra fee. Oh, we need more money. Of course, when you're dealing with somebody that's not of the same culture as you, sometimes it gets very easily um, to fall into prey for some scams where they charge extra fees and you think it's normal, especially, especially if you're just a complete beginner in e-commerce and in the online world, which is what people use AliExpress for, which is why, like I said, I recommend checking out all my podcasts because you learn a lot of these ways of people that make money in e-commerce or other ways to make money online on all of their mistakes, especially getting scammed in the earlier times of things. Another one is please cancel. Solution one, ignore the seller or you bought something on Ali, the seller contacts you with a sob story telling you that she is unable to ship the product because he's out of stock, the quality is not good and asks you to cancel your order. Ignore the seller and he hopes he will ship anyways. Sometimes they do, but often they will do a scam 005, which could be the start of a lot of trouble. And the scam 005, which we were talking about is just give you a fake tracking number. Another one is called a scam 012. Please cancel after product was shipped. You bought something on Ali and it was marked as shipped. Tracking doesn't update and suddenly the seller asks you to cancel the order. You can't really cancel an order after it's being shipped, so the seller asks you to open a dispute to get a refund. In some cases, he will ask to confirm receiving the product to be able to give your money back. Another one here is scam 023, resend with new one cent order, so it doesn't seem like that bad, but how it works is the seller proposes a resend and asks you to order that item again. The seller adjusts the price of the new order to one cent. The seller ships the new order and gets a brand new tracking code. You let the buyer protection on the original order expire. The new order never arrives or arrives broken, so you open a new dispute. You get a refund for one cent. So as you can see, it's like pretty insane what is happening like with AliExpress. And as you can see, there's like a lot of people on Reddit talking about it even as early as seven months ago, I was completely scammed by seller and AliExpress. Um, AliExpress is a scam. 40 customers being scammed on AliExpress did nothing. Um, and I even saw this article here on my wife quit her job and you know, it was like, his experience on that and his thoughts. So we can just go really quickly on this. AliExpress has a bad reputation for carrying cheap, worthless junk. So a common question I get asked is whether buying from AliExpress is worth it and is AliExpress safe? If you're buying products from AliExpress, will you get scammed with poor quality merchandise and lose money? So that's the thing, you know, you're dealing with China. And not only with China, you're dealing with like hundreds, if not thousands of different suppliers. And same way how you could kind of like deal with partnerships in the US and kind of get burnt out. Like there were so many times I got into like business partnerships and got like burnt out, right? 
I wouldn't necessarily say US is a scam or even more, most part, right? Like I grew up in the suburbs of like Chicago, right? And you know, I had an ex-girlfriend at the time that grew up in the suburbs of Detroit. Now the suburbs that we were in were actually a lot safer, right? But if you look at Chicago or Detroit in general, crime rates were extremely high. So whenever somebody went and asked me where I'm from and I said I'm from Chicago, even though I, that is the truth, there was like this fear thinking like I came from the city where like there was a lot of crime when in fact, you know, my childhood was like very, very safe and very, very uneventful. But there was just this, this perceived connotation of, oh, just because you're in Chicago, it's dangerous. It's the exact same thing. Just because you're dealing with China, people think it's very sketchy because they can't speak the language, they don't understand the nationality, they don't understand the people, they don't understand how to do business. It's not necessarily all of AliExpress is a scam, it's just like any opportunity, there's certain people that kind of like take advantage of things and will try to find ways to cheat the system. Like one way, for example, was on Craigslist, right? There's a lot of people on Craigslist that promote like network marketing and MLM opportunities. Um, and because of that, a lot of people don't like going to Craigslist for certain things, especially because there's a lot of players that kind of see the opportunity on that. It's the exact same thing that's going on with AliExpress. Now, AliExpress can be safe if you do multiple things. What I enjoy doing, for example, in this case, is coming up to here and buying products that I was selling on e-commerce, right? Sometimes you don't want to do e-commerce. Sometimes you want to go here to buy like really cheap products, right? So back in the day, I would like type in grill mat. And you know, at first when I go in here, I'm like super excited because I'm like, oh my God, I can make money online. This is insane. Look at all these products. And you see that some of these are like one cent, 21 cents, one cent. So it's kind of like sketchy already as it is, especially if you're just getting started. You're like, oh my God, this is weird. I don't know if I can go ahead and actually go ahead and do this. One of the best things that I enjoy doing is just sorting everything by orders because when you do that, you kind of see exactly which one are already the top suppliers as it is. And as you can see, as weird as it is, these ones are one cent and it's free shipping and they've already sold like 3,000, right? So just like that, uh, what I would actually do um, if this is a case is I would actually start pulling up all of these things and only sort from the top ones even if it's like a cent, right? Now let's see exactly how all of these ones are actually upping and being sold for, right? How many reviews do they have? Because the thing about reviews is they can also be inflated. You can see this one's 985 reviews with 3,000 orders. This one is, you know, 74 cents with 9,000 orders. This one is 2,000 orders. This one's 2,000 orders. So already you kind of see a discrepancy. Here, they show it for one cent Yet, when we pull up the exact same thing, these things are actually going for about like a dollar and 72. So just like that, the sketchiness of the front end, you can kind of see why people are a little off put about it because the price is just changes when you go ahead and click on it. So what I like doing actually is seeing what the reviews are, because when you see the customer reviews, people actually leave pictures of what the product actually is. So for baking, it's excellent. I ordered with a seller. You can see that this person was in Russian and they actually see the quality behind it, right? So if you could see multiple places from multiple different countries from AliExpress shoppers, you will see that, okay, if the quality is consistent amongst all of them, then it's good. You know, like I said, the best filter that I like is orders because, you know, you're using kind of like, you know, social proof and the fact that other people have purchased from the supplier to go ahead and, you know, either make money from it or buy from it. Right, so as you can see, this one has 2,000 reviews, right? So it's really good because when you come in here, you just go ahead and pull the customer reviews. And just like that, if there's like predominantly not that much feedback or not that much history, then I would just stay clear from it. And if you stick with that and you're doing e-commerce, you're making money on Shopify, you could actually do really well with AliExpress just as a supplier to go ahead and make money. In fact, I actually interview a lot of people on my podcast that actually make a lot of money with AliExpress, like this guy is one of them, the art of making millions of dollars. He has a bunch of suppliers from China that he actually makes money. He doesn't do AliExpress anymore. He now deals with supplies directly and he now builds his own supply chain, so it's actually insane. And that's why it's always important to learn from other people's mistakes, guys. So hopefully this helps, guys. If you want to fast when you to make money online, you want to find out how I was able to pull in an extra 100 to $1,000 a day, 
profit without having my own product. As you can see in the past 30 days, it's been pretty insane. We've netted about like 39,000, but as you can see, you know, on the low end, you know, we're making $500, but even on the past seven days, it's been insane. Averaging about $1,000 a day, some days a little bit higher. Today was like insane. Check it out in the free workshop below. We have a 62 year old woman go from zero to 160 grand profit in 90 days with no product and no customers for service and no shipping and handling and no dealing with China. Check it out in the link below. With that being said, I love you guys. See you guys later. Also check out my podcast in the link below. See you guys later. You.